Hello, welcome back to more role-playing. As always, I'm Smarker14 with my Game Master, Grey Alpha. And Hello. we, when we last left off, my character, Gregor, was with the artist, James, and the harpist, what's his name? Uh, the harpist, I don't think we gave him a name yet. Well, we'll find out his name. And we are going to get a drink, and then we're going to go speak at a seminar. And maybe we'll find out some more crazy things. All this, up next, go. Alright, so as you're walking down to the, uh, uh, the, the dining hall, a uh, casual conversation ensues as it would normally. Okay. As we um, talk, I remember last night when I went to ask James if he would like a drink, and how upon knocking on his door and calling for him, he did not answer. Um, do you mention it? Yeah, I mentioned it to James. Um, James says he doesn't recall you knocking on his door, and he wasn't in his room the entire evening, so he thinks he would, like, he wasn't, and he wasn't, like, uh, so into painting that he wouldn't have heard you knocking. Yes, you if you're sure you had the right room. I said I was certain because, uh, I remembered yours was adjacent to mine, so... I was quite certain it was yours. Not revealing, he says, not revealing that I looked in his keyhole. He says he's certain he didn't hear anything, and that he can hear quite clearly the hallway, so he doesn't know why he wouldn't have heard anything, and he seems puzzled as you are. Hmm. Hmm. Creepy. He also mentioned that he's disturbed by the uh, idle chatter of people walking by. Such as, like, it, like it, I assume you mentioned the fact that you called his name. Yeah. He said he would have heard that for sure, but. I yeah. also um, revealed to him about how my phone did a similar thing to his, about how it repeatedly called, and all there was was a dial tone. He says that he had he will talk to Jenkins about it next time he sees it, and that you should do likewise. Tyler at this point chimes in, saying that his or Tyler is the uh, harpist. Harpist. Okay. Uh, who I didn't, who I was say, but I, uh, and that is revealed through small talk. Um, he chimes in that his phone was acting weirdly the night before, and that it would ring, and yet when he picked it up, there was only a dial tone. Um, mm -hmm. That, uh, he had to unplug it. Because he doesn't know that that was what was happening to your phone. Hmm. So. Weird. Um. Are there, the um, are there windows in the hallways we're walking down? Um, the, yes, and they remain completely um gray hmm. it it's it's weird to it seems weird to you because um the snow you'd assume would be piling up fairly high but it doesn't seem like the snow is unwalkable it just seems like it's nasty hmm. like perhaps you assume that perhaps it, it's switching between snow and, and rain and that might explain why the snow is staying low hmm. okay but, like, the snow is probably three feet high, so you're still not walking through you need to. But, at the same time, if it had been a full-on blizzard since the day before, it would be, like, ten feet high. Okay. Um, with that, you arrive at the cafeteria, which is sparsely populated. There's several students there who you assume or presume have early classes. Um... You and the, your two comrades walk up to the line and um, get the other two order, or not order, they get uh, apple juice and orange juice. Um, orange juice for the harpist, apple juice for the 
hardest? Um, I get a glass of milk so we can accurately portray a balanced breakfast. <laughs> um, the three of you sit down, um, and strike up again casual conversation. Um, um, I ask them if any of them have been out in the snow or outside ever since the blizzard hit. The harpist states that he arrived as the blizzard was starting to go into full swing. And the artist says he arrived before you and the snow had barely started when he arrived. Okay. I mentioned that I saw some people walking around outside, but do not mention the uh, banging on my window or the band room windows, but merely that I saw people outside, very vaguely, so they don't get suspicious. The harpist, both of them comment that that is strange, and it, that it is strange that anyone would be outside in such harsh conditions. But the harpist comments that it is likely just students from the campus. Um, with that, the harpist uh, decides that he is starting to get peckish and asks, or it, and is going to go get some food and asks if either of you would like him to get anything for you. The other artist asks for a. Um, Biscuits and or biscuit and gravy, and the harpist looks at you. Uh, I just asked for a bagel, and then I get up to excuse myself, uh, to, um, to investigate outside, uh, since the idea was once again brought to my mind, but to portray it as me going to the bathroom. Um, I've you get up to walk away, the other artist stands up and follows you until you're out of earshot from the harpist. He then leans in and states that he ha he too has seen figures outside, and he wasn't quick to mention it around the harpist because he didn't want to give a bad impression, but it seemed like he was being watched sometimes from his window, so he closed his blinds. Uh -huh. Beginning to trust him more, I can sense that the same happened to me, and I mentioned the band room and also the banging on the window. He said he didn't have anything um, extremely, like as extreme as the band room happened or the banging, but it gave him, it inspired true fear in him. And it was only after that fear entered him, I, or entered, I guess entered, no, like a, yeah, I know what you mean. Within him, that paint the screaming woman. Hmm. Okay. Um, I quickly conspire with him to ask if he would like to see what the conditions are like outside, and if anybody knows if people have been wandering the campus. Um, he says that he, uh, he doesn't want to abandon the harpist, so he just, but he did want to tell you that, so he says he will return to the seat. Okay. Um, regardless, I still step out, I still step, step out to the atrium mm. and head towards the front door to see what it would be like if I went outside. Like, do you open the door? Yes, I open the door to check on conditions. Alright, instantly you are hit by a blast of cold air. Um, and it's just like it almost consumes you. Okay. Um, um, no poison. Okay. Uh, I. Oh, and by the way, people are looking up at like there's one or two students in there, and they look up at you, kind of like you're crazy. Okay. Um, I quickly close the door and turn around and make light of the situation by cracking a joke that I won't be going home anytime soon. The one, stu the one student who's sitting on the steps looks back down to the book that is in his hand and the other is continue walking. Um, I go up to the student who is reading and ask if he knows 
always if there is any kind of like a weather ban where you can't go outside because the weather's too extreme. Um, he says that the in 